Hello everyone, I'm Prasad from the Structural Guide. Today we are going to discuss about why you need rebar in the concrete. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, you may get notification on new videos. What is concrete? Concrete is made of cement, water, sand and coarse aggregate. In addition, we may use admixtures for improvement or the enhancement of the properties of the concrete. Concrete is strong in compression and it's weak in tension. Generally, the compression strength of the concrete is high, but tensile strength is a little lower. As a general norm, it's, it's very, but as a general norm, the tensile strength is about 10% of the, its compression strength. Therefore, as you can see, one tenth, it's a very small value uh, that the tensile capacity of the concrete when compared to the compression strength. Therefore, uh, concrete can bear the compression stresses, but when there are tensile stresses, that has to be bear by some other element. We have to provide some other element or some other material to bear the tensile stresses in the concrete. So, if you take the element like column, it has a compressive stress because it's a apply a axial load, then the column subject to compressive stress. You can see when the column is load applied here, it's way there is a compression in the column. But when there are when there are beams connected to the columns like this, so in these cases, when 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 there are this spans is very larger and the axial load is smaller, then there may be bending stresses as well. That we can discuss this later also. That is when column act like a beam. So the, this is we discuss under the beams now. Uh, columns in general stress is compressive stress so concrete can bear that stress but in some occasions the compressive stress is not enough or the compression capacity is not enough in such a situations we provide the reinforcement for the columns so in addition addition as additional capacity improvement so in such cases we column capacity is based on the concrete compressive stress and the rebar stress both combined take stresses during the design that has to be taken there are different methods to evaluate the capacity so there we consider both these capacities when evaluating the capacity of the column when it take a beam it subject both the bending tensile and compressive stresses if you can see here this is a beam so here we have a tension and here we have a compression because when you have a bend like this, it's, these points are compressed, these points are moved this way. So there will be a tension in the bottom, there will be compression in the top here, in these locations, especially in the mid spans. So it's a, such a situation, so when you have a tensile stresses here, these areas, we have to provide the reinforcement. That is the purpose of the reinforcement. We provide the reinforcement to increase the capacity of columns when it cannot be taken by the reinforcement. We may provide nominal reinforcement, but to enhance the capacity of the columns, we may provide the reinforcement as required based on the axial load applied on the column. Apart from that, when 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 uh, beams are loaded, then the beams definitely we have to provide the reinforcement according to its action. Uh, there are places it's, we have the tension and compression both. So you can see the the here the section of beam. So this beam, this part is in compression, this part, and this part is in tension. You can see the stress strain diagram, strain diagram, variation of the strain of the concrete. So uh, this 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 has to be considered during the design. What is important here is rather going with the technical stuff. Now here this when when sections subject to uh, bending stress then top is compression in, in if you take this location top is compression this part so we have a compressive stress com taken by the concrete but the bottom you don't have a compressive stress because it's, it's tension concrete bottom section part is in tension so we need to have a element to carry the tension so we provide the reinforcement this, these are the things we provide there so in summary when when uh, when compressive stress need to enhance, we provide the reinforcement. In addition, when there are tensile stressors in the section, we have to provide the reinforcement. These are the things that we areas where we need the reinforcement. 
in a section. Let's discuss few example. Now you can see here a cantilever beam. This is cantilever beam. We here we have a support. We here we here we have a support. So it's been like this scaled figure, but it's been like this. So your tension is here. Your compression is here. Right? The, in this section, as since it's become like this, this section, this part is throughout the second intention. In so we have to provide the reinforcement where we have the tension. So in a sections, if we have a tension, we have to provide the reinforcement. Other areas we may provide the nominal or the minimum reinforcement. If you take this continuous beam, you can see here it's bent like this. Now now depending on the bending moment or bending pattern deflection pattern we can decide where to provide the reinforcement you can see here it's bend like this so tension will be here the compression will be here because when you when you this when then when this beam deflected like this 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 portion subject to tension this portion subject to compression because it's 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 closing together when when it deflect but here it's moving this way try to try to move this way it's, there will be tension here it's opposite so tension will be here compression will be at the bottom here tension here compression here so these are the key things we have to remember when do the reinforcement work so we have to provide the where the tension tension stresses here, here we the, the the tension reinforcement required at the bottom here tension reinforcement required at the top here tension reinforcement required at the bottom these are the areas we need to have a reinforcement bottom top bottom this had to be, this we have to keep in mind so in the top we may need only the nominal reinforcement or uh, minimum reinforcement so beam at support we have to go at top reinforcement span in the mid span we have to have the bottom reinforcement that's the key Let's take a few examples. Right here, you can see a continuous beam here. So, if you take the theory now, say this is con this is a kind of beam. Here we have to provide the tension reinforcement. You can you can see here the reinforcement area is higher than there. So this is here we have a hooking. Here we have a hanging sagging. So therefore, we have to have a bottom reinforcement here. Others reinforcement is a sagging uh, hangers, hanger bars to provide the shear link. We need to have a nominal reinforcement or the minimum reinforcement. With that, we can have the links hang there. So technically, we have a tension reinforcement here. Tension reinforcement here at the bottom. Support, we have to have reinforcement. Mid span, we have to have reinforcement. We don't lap the reinforcement at the mid span. Here also at the near the support we don't lap we, you lap here this area bottom reinforcement we lap here course the sum here also we can see in this figure also the tension reinforcement provided here more reinforcement right there here you have a small area for reinforcement that is hanger reinforcement or minimum reinforcement in the mid span you have a bottom reinforcement here so you can have the bottom reinforcement left here the top reinforcement left here not close to the support the the, because the tension is here we generally don't lap where the tension is always try to minimize the lap at lapping reinforcement that where the where the tensile stresses are there so you can take the slab the same here will apply at supports we have to provide the hogging reinforcement or the top reinforcement and at spans we have to provide the sagging reinforcement here you can see here there are top reinforcement beam is support the slab slab support by the beam so there will be hogging reinforcement hogging bend uh, hogging uh, bending moment then we have to provide the top reinforcement here mid span you have to provide the bottom reinforcement so that is the key here again we have to provide the top reinforcement that's the key so if you draw the bending moment diagram of this beam it will be like this it's like this right we are here we have a hogging here we have a hogging here we have a sagging so here we have to provide the reinforcement at the bottom support we have to provide the reinforcement at top these are the two critical locations 
Now, providing uh, only the bottom reinforcement won't be adequate. There will be tensile cracks and sub slab build subject to fail. Therefore, we have to follow this theory. That's uh, that's the discussions for today. We discuss about why we need reinforcement here and how we provide the reinforcement. And where we need to provide the reinforcement in structure element like beams and slabs. So thank you very much. Let's meet from another video.